Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Nornrad89 here with my buddy Steve, and we are here now to tackle the rest of season two. We're going to be talking about episode 10 through 13. Steve, how are you doing? How are you feeling today? I'm doing great. We're at the midway point, which is pretty yeah. exciting. Uh, officially halfway through the series. Uh, two to go and a movie, which, you know, lots oh, more yeah. to cover. Pretty <laughs> lots more. M milestone for, cover uh, for courage. I know it's going to be huge. I'm, I'm hoping we can. I think if we keep it on track, we should be able to be through this by the end of the year. We don't know because, like I said, holiday time does come up and we will get busy at that time. But maybe by the end of the year, we'll have some cool specials and stuff, like I said, for the movie live streams, talking our favorite episodes and stuff like that. So, yeah, very exciting yeah. stuff. <laughs> it's totally on me. I've like rescheduled on you a couple of times so oh, that's fine like i said life gets busy i was busy paying and everything working on house hurting hurting myself too you know that always happens <laughs> okay well you know that's uh and un unlike uh you know eustace or any of our cartoon characters you know they don't just get a reset <laughs> oh yeah the next day you gotta <laughs> kind of feel that the next day all right, so you ready to tackle our first segment of episode 10, Steve? Yeah, yeah. Um, so first episode, um, part one, car broke, phone yes. Yeah. A floating alien brain steals Muriel's kindness and takes it back to its master, leaving courage under two angry owners until he can retrieve it. Uh, <laughs> I thought this was a fun little concept. What did you think about it? I think the this one, a great concept in our creature design, like our kind of antagonist character but like the one that you know just comes in like such a weird design and he has like the coat with the little hat and everything and just the eyeballs peeking out and like oh ew, i had that really creepy vibe to it <laughs> yeah and i sort of loved that we get a um a little et reference here yeah that's true huh uh well kind of throughout right so phone so yeah so our alien shows up right and then can really only talk in like um like a couple of uh what you like what's it's just like word? nouns or like certain things like he's like phone yes phone e? yes phone yeah <laughs> like et phone home right so we get car broke phone yes like it's sort of like in these like broken syllables yeah um in these singular words and it's it's, re <laughs> it's really cute and then so the the ultimate plot being that they're looking for kindness but she doesn't find any in eustace Oh, of course not. Yeah, you're not gonna find any there. <laughs> I love that he sort of like probes uses, and he's just sort of like, oh, you know, whatever it was. This check, this check. You know, it was all like the the negative adjectives, yeah. um, like grumpy or whatever. Uh, but kindness, no. <laughs> so but we, but he finds it in in uh, Muriel. Yeah, and, and then, then he takes it uh, to its master to, I guess, learn what not to do to rule the universe. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you get that whole was it the hive mind vibe type thing with the whole creating the brain, the master brain. Mm -hmm. And Muriel, it's kind of funny and cute that like once he takes the kindness from her, she's just acts straight up like Eustace. And like Eustace almost has that thing where he he kind of loves himself. So he loves the fact that Muriel is kind of angry, too, at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And they sort of almost have like a weird dynamic, like um, like him and his mom. Right. I mean, that's sort of why him and his mom get along. It's like yeah. they're both horrible people. <laughs> <laughs> um so that he gets that in in muriel um but then yeah they're both like bossing courage around and ah no i love that oh yeah and then courage of course has to come to the rescue always like and i think for real like in these last the latter half of the second season you can really tell just creativity wise and animation design how much they're going for it you know what i mean in terms of the stuff and everything so i really like that yeah, this has like an almost, um, yeah, I feel like we're kind of back to season one experimental um, ideas with this batch of episodes. Definitely, because there's a lot of science typical stuff, but then we also have some very horror heavy episodes, possession and all that kind of stuff. So this latter half of the season, I think, was a slam dunk, probably like the strongest grouping of episodes we've had really for season two, I think yeah yeah and so a couple little tidbits right i mean so we get space chicken again in this episode <laughs> um there were they use the same uh font in the title card as star wars um uh but they call it the star jedi font nice <laughs> uh reference there obviously et was like our main uh movie reference um 
and then yeah, and those are sort of our our core um, little, little fun facts, facts, fun tidbits for this episode today. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, I think you're right. I, I did I did love the design um, and this sort of hive brain um, throwback. With these with these characters, and I think they, you know, they like you said, I think they really nail it in this second half of the season, as far as like pushing their um, like pushing what they haven't done yet. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And for some reason, this one, like when I was watching this episode, like I got like heavy, just yeah, like you said, old school science fiction, like you know, fifties black and white vibes, kind of. You know what I mean? Like I can see some of these Courage the Cowardly Dog episodes being in black and white, and they would probably oh, work yeah. very well. You know, I I might have to go back and rewatch an episode and then just turn the color off on the TV and see yeah. how it feels. I feel like it would almost be creepier if the show was in black and white. I almost wish it was. Yeah, <laughs> you're talking about it. Um, I think. I mean, yeah, I think it might turn off some of the kids wanting to watch the show. Right? They'd probably yeah. be like, "What the hell is this?" But um, I think us, I think we'd appreciate it. You know, it would have it'd such more uh, more throwback vibe to it, yeah. definitely for sure. Oh, yeah. So shall uh, we get on to our next segment now? Yeah, take us away. All right. Cowboy Courage is our next segment, I believe. Yeah. Courage mm-hmm. dreams that he and his owners were in the Old West and Courage playing the sheriff, Muriel as the bartender, and Eustace as an outlaw. So really cool, fun, just dream sequence episode. I don't think we've ever really had one like this, huh? No, I mean, it very much is like, uh, I mean, can you call it a bottle episode in the sense of like, you know, when you look at a show, typically, right, you have like a structure, you know, but all mm-hmm. these episodes are very much their own thing. So it feel, it's interesting to sort of have an episode kind of do its an extra layer of its own thing where yeah. it's just sort of like, you know, we're going to p- kind of look into um, Courage's psyche a little bit. Yeah, um, kind of how he sees himself. Hmm? Yeah, it's like a little bit of how he sees himself, like, you know, because he has it's like because the people want him to be the outlaw you know even though they have nefarious reasons for wanting him to be the sheriff and all that stuff but you can see that he views himself as brave you know what i mean that he can do a job like that and all that kind of stuff but he obviously oh, yeah. is afraid of eustace and he views him as the antagonist of course <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah you know it is it is interesting to see like courage again like again this is how courage sees himself and like you said you know they really push um Courage being the hero in these later yeah. episodes, like I think it's more obvious in these, uh, where he has to really step up, and it's interesting to use sort of his dream sequence to look at, like, yeah, seeing himself as like the sheriff in nowhere, um, yeah, and 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 really the whip, right? That's sort of useless as the whip or the the you know the cool little nickname they give him as the villain. Yeah, that was <laughs> when I thought that was so cute when the guy was trying to say like the word when he was trying to say it to them and mouth it to them and they were like trying to say what is he saying? So quick, quick, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, you get, yeah, you get these like fun little like um play on word gags that they have. Um I mean also interesting that like you know, Muriel is sort of like the bar maiden too, which is also like how it's, I feel like that's more how Eusis would see her. Almost, yeah, like as a servant type character, yeah, like kind of, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, she just sort of, you know, she's there, she cooks for him, she cleans for him, he doesn't do anything. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, she's the one keeping the house together. Um, So it is interesting, right? So everyone's sort of role is played out quite literally in this. Yeah, and then even, uh, what is it, Courage has a couple of reoccurring members of like uh, past episodes, like I think uh, from the Heads of Beef episode, we have the cook the the, mm-hmm. the hog guy he's in the beginning the mayor oh, yeah. of the town and the older gentleman all three of them i think we've seen before <laughs> oh yeah yeah the mayor um so they have i was actually gonna pull up because it looks like they have names <laughs> yeah, right so we have um so the mayor of nowhere the second disguise of villains cat and Lequack, um floyd the old guy. Um <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Hothead, Caveat and Curse of Shirley. So yeah, so this so this character, right? So Floyd is his name, and then we have um yeah, Jean Bon. Jean Bon. Jean Bon, bon Jones. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so yeah, I love again, yeah, seeing this sort of 
you know, even in uh, Courage's dreams, we're getting these characters show up. Um, yeah. You know, it kind of gives the world a little more of a lived-in look, feel. Oh, yeah, that's what's really good, too. In these episodes, we get a lot of different additives to nowhere too in terms of like you know other stuff that's going to build on to the lore when we get into some of these episodes that we're going to talk about next like in our later segments yeah yeah um you want to dive in to yeah what's the next evil weevil oh yeah uh, we got evil weevil eustace accidentally hits a human-sized ball weevil named jeeves with his truck and muriel invites him to spend the night unfortunately jeeves soon begins sucking eustace and muriel's lives away um yeah so again like a really fun uh sort of antagonist set up here um with, with the weevil um there's sort of um uh, so funny reference and actually they just popped i just came across this one on the trivia thing but i picked up on it um was it was actually insp inspired some of the designs were inspired by dragon ball z oh really <laughs> uh yeah yeah so uh the cell saga um, oh, so that's why Weevil has like kind of like the wings. So they talk about his wings and some of the design of him. So you know how like its cell sort of sucks up, yeah. Sort of, you know, and to get stronger. So um, they sort of aired it around the same time as this episode. So a lot of the animators sort of knew what was coming. <laughs> um, yeah, so they were able to kind of look at like, oh, cell is sort of a general like bug like character, um, okay. and they worked it into coverage a bit. <laughs> that's cute <laughs> See, yeah, courage, yeah pushing the bounds of pop culture <laughs> i love that yeah well yeah because that was part of the toonami block um so like dragon ball was on toonami at this time i think they i guess they are they were around the cell saga this is what 2001 2002 yeah so they wanted a, a little fun thing you know kind of a nod to like this is another show that's the same family you know we're in the same family cartoon network family yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so sort of a little bit anime influencing american animation yeah what did you I think was, generally of the of this story? I thought like I thought the design of him and just like in general, yeah, very creepy. Like especially when Courage is seeing him like suck, like when he starts eating Eustace, and then Eustace gets thinner and thinner, and it just gave me total like Stephen King thinner vibes. Like it just gave oh, me those yeah. vibes completely. <laughs> <laughs> so we get a little bit of body horror. I mean, no, we're yeah. very, very little bit. Um, you know, as much as they can do. Right, we get these very like. Um, what, what, uh, emaciated looking bodies yeah and then muriel first muriel starts to like it because she's obviously more fo like all photogenic and she's like modeling and everything for the weevil and stuff so it's like cool at first but then he starts to you know take more and more and more <laughs> yeah oh yeah i know i thought that was funny too it's like yeah i think um because i always laugh when people are like yeah i got so sick but i lost 15 pounds and i look great <laughs> that does happen a lot of people do <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I hear so many people say that, right? Or, or people, yeah, I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks or a week, and like I, I came out and I look great. I'm like, well, you know, but you know, health issues. <laughs> <laughs> it's some silver linings, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what it made me think of. Uh, but yeah, no, I did love it when she was feeling herself a little bit. Um, it's, uh, you know, I always love you know with, with Muriel um, in episodes like this. Like even if it's like obviously there's like a, a bad reason why she's feeling herself, but. Um, when she gets a little moment to sort of enjoy herself a little bit, or there's a little bit of joy, I always love seeing Muriel kind of like, oh yeah, she going shines, off and doing yeah. her thing, you know. Yeah, one of my favorites would be a callback to when the Goose God comes down and she kind of, you know, kind of flirts with them a little bit, even though she's like not gonna go at all with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, yeah, Muriel's such a fun because she has such a, she always has like an innocent look at like whatever craziness is happening around them yeah um, so this is just another illustration of that which i i always find hysterical yeah true true because like i said the first thing she does when she talks to the weevil she's like oh well i was just about to make dinner so you should come by like come yeah. by and have some dinner <laughs> always inviting them in for dinner <laughs> that's true <laughs> said nowhere hospitality oh yeah definitely <laughs> so anything else on our weevil episode steve uh no no i mean you know it's um you know obviously we get the exterminator um as our minor character in this episode. yeah he does return yeah he's like the big because i think he's been like a military man that character with like just not seeing the eyes but the very buff look yeah they well they use very similar character designs right so i think yeah. it's almost like little little clones i don't know maybe if it's the same person or not i don't know <laughs> maybe 
<laughs> they're like, you know, we just need a big buff dude, all right? All the big, big buff yeah. dudes, the same. <laughs> the muscle. Yeah, but it was good. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good there. Um, cool. You can take the next one. All righty. So is it uh, McPherson's Phantom, correct? I believe that's our next one. Uh, McPherson Phantom, yeah. Yeah. All right. Muriel and Eustace's marriage is tested when they are manipulated into turning against each other by a crafty phantom and an unlikely accomplice, Eustace's mother, Ma. <laughs> this was a very <laughs> cute one. One of my favorites, and probably out of all the episodes on this list, the one that got me to audibly laugh the most. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, now you got to tell me what was the what was the, the joke part. That got this? So it was just so simple as like it was building and you see all the stuff happening to Eustace over and over. And then the reveal of what's under his hat when she's talking, when he's like talking to Muriel and he's like, something in me just is telling me that you're coming after me and all this stuff. And he pulls off his hat and you just see the look of his head and Courage's reaction was the best. He's like eating his food and he's like turned like this and then he just his mouth drops wide open and all the food pours out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. I laughed for like, I think a minute. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, so I love this episode sort of as a breakdown of like their marriage. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, and sort of, you know, um, and of course, you know, if you're viewers, I mean, I'm, I, I talk about it sometimes on my channel, <laughs> like work channel. I don't know, but I am a therapist. So yeah. I had a little bit of a kick with some of these, uh, you know, therapy gags and Ma getting involved. Yeah, um, Courage and Ma. There's a lot. Of, there's yeah. There's a couple of therapy segments in here for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. So the uh, you know the Ma gets a mail order therapist license. I'm like, if, if we're so easy, some you know some people think you know it is that easy to be a therapist. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I promise. To my clients, I did not get my uh, license in the mail. <laughs> no, Steve. Steve is legit. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> I am ordained. That I got in the mail. <laughs> ordained. Oh wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that's good. Cool. Okay, yeah, I can marry people technically. <laughs> <laughs> I did it for my best friend at their wedding. That's but those cute. things, that's okay. That you can get in the mail. That that that's not a big deal. But therapy, you probably want to make sure your person's legit. Um, but this phantom is, uh, yeah, this was fine. A simple design, right? For this one. Oh, yeah. But, um, I thought the just the design. Yeah, very simple black, kind of uh Ghostbusters almost like uh but bigger, you know what I mean? And had the black and the you know green and a little purple and mixed in there. Yeah, you know what it kind of reminded me of? Um did you ever play you're a little bit older than me, so I don't know if you play these. They were the um pajama Sam computer games. Do you know those games? Is that I don't know if I did. I might if they were point and click. Was it like a point and click type it was a of point game? And click game? It was like Putt Putt, Pajama Sam, Freddy Fish. It was no, like I old, think like, so. Yeah, yeah, they were point and click computer games in like the the nineties, early two thousands, or whatever. Um, and then so Pajama Sam, the first one was going to like his nightmares, and it was like the boogeyman in the closet, and it was like very like those kinds of designs. Yeah. Um, which is actually funny enough. That's, that's, now that I'm thinking about it, it reminds the show just in general reminds me a lot about of like that game. Um, <laughs> and there was another one called like Nightmare Ned. I think your viewers might know that. I think it's called Nightmare Ned. Nice. Um, we'll have to bring it up. Yeah, we'll have to shout them out in the comments if you guys know any of those. <laughs> yeah, it was very much like. Um, oh gosh, if I could show you the design. It, it honestly. Oh, it's a Disney interactive game. That's interesting. Um, here, let me show you. I'm going to show you real fast. Cool. I know I'm like messing with the format of the show, but I, I have no, to. that's fine. Here, let me do this one. It's um, always special stuff. I'm pretty sure everybody's going to be enjoying to hear it. Because I used to play a, which was a really fun one that I loved was Sam and Max. And it was like oh, a detective yeah. bunny and a dog. And it was a point and click game, like murder mystery game. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, so this is... Um, this is it. Uh, how do I open image and new tab? Let's share this tab instead. Yeah. So that was like nice. Nightmare on Dead. Like very similar like designs of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I bet you they pulled a lot from that. Yeah, probably. Because everything, it seems like Courage, like I said, they are able to pull from the 90s, the 50s, the 80s. And they do all these things when it comes to, like said, style of text or design of characters or the music 
a lot of the music in these episodes was really oh, good yeah. too, especially the final episode in this pat in this batch. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna pull a pajama Sam too, but you know what? That's gonna be a whole other uh rabbit hole we don't have to go down this is a current <laughs> episode but very much of like this like late 90s early 2000s like kids cartoon aesthetic where they would throw back to a lot of this older stuff oh um, yeah you know because like you know everybody says everything does it does eventually you know circle around we do want to bring it back so that the other generations can see what has passed and what came before you know made courage what it is basically if that stuff didn't happen <laughs> oh yeah yeah so some other little tidbits um so shared music with king ramsey's curse there was a lot of some there was shared score um although my favorite score is gonna i'll, I'll talk about that soon um first and only appearance of the phantom so if you like this character that this is all you're getting of him this is all you get <laughs> uh, <laughs> And it premiered eight weeks after the original voice actor for Ma uh, passed away. Uh, well, yeah. rest, rest in peace to Ma. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, yeah, other like references. So, like, the Loch Ness Monster was referenced in this episode. Um, yeah, that's and true. Great Aunt Awkward Zelda was mentioned. <laughs> but <that's true. laughs> and there was, a Star, there was a Star Wars quote in here, too. Or they do you feel the disturbance, or I feel a disturbance, feel disturbance in the force? Force. Yes, yes. So this is our second um, Star Wars reference in this batch of episodes as well, right? So we had the font <laughs> for the uh, the phone one, and then yeah. uh, this this one we get the actual line. Yeah, good catch, yeah. Thank thank you for it because I would have I don't know why I was I should have written that down. Yeah, that was a great part because that was I think when Courage was first was when Courage was trying to get Eustace and Muriel to make up, and he was doing the therapy. Thing, and it was Ma and the Phantom were separated from them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, yeah, we gotta have them working it out. But, uh, yeah. So the next one. Um, yeah. Anything else on this one? I'm all good. See if we can keep it trucking. Let's go. Keep it trucking along. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you do the last one? Or I did. I did one? the last one. Yeah. So it's okay. your turn. Yep. House of discontent. Uh, the spirit of the harvest moon appears one night, demanding that courage and his owners leave, since Eustace cannot seem to grow anything on their land. <laughs> I love the spirit of uh, the harvest. <laughs> yes. So this is <coughs> for everyone that's no. This is this is a, a reference to like that old movie. Um, this was uh, what you call it. Um. Oh, what is the name of that movie? I don't, I don't even know if they have it. Um, it's like a live. Fun so the way facts. they shoot it, it's like a live action head. But remember that like man on the moon thing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's and that's where he's designed after where he's from that design. Because, yeah, it has that, like you said, that live action feel. And it's just the face floating. Well, it's that old. Um, oh, I should have pulled it up. <laughs> um, but I love the heavy, like haunting vibes. Like we have heavy haunted house vibes in this one, poltergeist vibes oh, and stuff uh, like yeah, that. Very strong. Mm -hmm. Um, I can find the old, uh, old film. It's got like the <laughs> uh, a trip to the moon. Trip to the moon. Okay, nice. So it's an old. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this up. It's a 19. Um, o2 science fiction film. Wow. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, I'm going to show this real fast. It's based on so nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is like a, a really old, this is like cinema like history. So this is like an old film from 1902. Um, I don't know all the stuff that's on my head, but I believe it's French. Um, yeah, I'll pull up a little, a little reference. So this is signed by, um, George Miles, um, September of 1902. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is sort of a, a inspired by Jules Verne's From Earth to the Moon. It's an 1865 novel. Um, so yeah, so this design is really pulling from like some real, like, <laughs> Real film history. <laughs> oh yeah, it's digging deep. You're like, like almost really like great train deep. robbery deep. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but this is sort of yeah, the so the inspiration of like the spirit and the and the, the live action head is very much based on this piece um, here. 
Um, and then, but yeah, like I said, so yeah, we get like poltergeist references. So for people that don't know, absolutely love poltergeist. That's yeah. my, you know, that was my jam. <laughs> so we get sort of, um, yeah, like objects moving and all sort of like awesome kind of, uh, yeah, poltergeist activity. Oh, yeah. Haunted bathrooms and the radio, which actually the radio drops a line which has a our creator. His name is in the radio mm -hmm. station. Is <laughs> So that was kind of a cool name drop <laughs> to have him in there. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, so what did you think then, overall? Yeah. Like, what is some of your favorite takeaways from this episode? Besides uh, the design of the head and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really dig like, um, again, so this is another episode and this comes up a lot where they talk about um, not necessarily an environmental message, kind of actually, um, yeah. where it's about the land, right? And, and taking care of the land. And and, 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 and so I love that so there's sort of this like uh, carry through because um, I think it also came up in... Was it the banana one? I don't remember. There was a couple of like there were ones where they were very like very like eco heavy in terms of the yeah. like kind of side messaging. Yeah. So it's and it's interesting. And and so they also sort of play on, you know, disrespecting the land and not taking so which is also so poltergeist actually this is I had an argument with a film teacher um once about this is that poltergeist is actually not based you know they're not on a native american burial not at least not in the first movie no, no there's nothing native american about the first movie at all yeah <laughs> um they, they mention it but sort of in saying like oh it's not like this is native american burial this was just a cemetery right this was just sort of america you know a typical you know euro <laughs> you know yeah he just tells the he just tells him the dad that they've done it before he's all like we, we've done this before <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so this isn't like a, this is like a more of a christian kind of cemetery thing right like but anyway so like you know so we're referencing sort of that um the idea of you know disrespecting the land and, and it kind of coming to 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 bite them in the butt oh yeah but I thought this one was fun too, just because like Courage the whole time trying to get that plant and like doing everything he can, you know, playing music, watering it, just being so nice, giving every bit of nourishment he could to the plant. And then finally, you know, pulls it out at the very end. You know, it's like so cute. Has a little in his hand when he's like running with it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love it. But again, so yeah, Courage really saving the day. And they really, again, they hammer this home in this last batch of episodes. Um, Because, you know, we've had episodes where it's almost like, um, not Deus Ex Machina, but like, you know, you know, Courage is sort of, you know, helping out. But, you know, this, I mean, really, they kind of hit it over the head with him sort of being like, no, he he's really the one kind of taking charge now. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's kind of the main, like I said, the main boy. He's always going to the computer, even though the computer is offering the weirdest advice and stuff. But he always ends up figuring it out, too. You know, <laughs> he's got his sources. <laughs> oh, yeah. But again, yeah, the, you know, the animation, you know, the the, the combination of like hand-drawn live action cgi like oh man like we need more we need more shows that like combine different mediums like this yeah that kind of just aren't afraid to do things like i said i feel like the creators of this one they just you know were like i said really creative they just weren't afraid to push boundaries they probably were like sitting in that room and all were like you know let's try this like let's just throw it at the wall you know it's gonna stick or not <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i mean so we've had obvious references to poltergeist um harvest moon um is a video game about farming um i don't know yep. if they were necessarily referencing it or not um but to combine you know harvest and moon and create this kind of character this like you know ghost character um yeah. you know it Interesting. I mean, I'm sure there's some probably were some nerds playing these games. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh for sure. Um and you know, one of the few episodes where Eustace does not uh fall victim um at the end. <laughs> no, okay, yeah, he's all safe at the end, yeah. He does end up trying to be greedy, of course, again, trying to sell his flower though. Oh or sure, his, or his skills of growing the flower, even though he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's it. That's uh, you know, uh, the house of discontent. The house of discontent. Yeah. So now on to or me next, right? The sand whale strikes. A sand whale arrives at the farmhouse and mistakes Eustace for his deceased father, Ickit. 
demanding the return of an accordion he swindled from him. Eustace tries to explain that his mother Ma has it, but the sand whale does not believe him. The whale devours Muriel and Eustace and heads off, and Courage must convince the stubborn old Ma to give the whale back the accordion in order to win Muriel and Eustace back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this this was an interesting one for sure. Our so, second episode yeah. in this batch about revenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, about revenge and sort of um, Ma becoming more of um active character yeah in this we get to see her antagonist kind of in in a way (laughs) Uh, you know versus then just sort of being you know Eustace's foil or you know just sort of being there to mess their stuff up or (laughs) highlight uh, this is why Eustace is so bad you know yeah um that they actually have to team up um which is an interesting flip on the tropes right because like you know usually sometimes when Eustace and Courage have to team up it's kind of a flip on that yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, Ma. Um, but I, you know, I dug it and it really just ends up feeling like one, um, you know, you have big chase sequence really towards the end where they're on the boat and they're kind of heading towards the rail. Like, I really enjoyed that dynamic. Oh, um, yeah. It's very useless coded, but because it's Ma, there's a different flavor to it. <laughs> Yeah, that's what's cool too. And I love our whale. Like the wickle was uh, the whale was fantastic. Yeah, he's just like, hey, get back. He's like, give me a recording. And he's like so intent, like how Eustace can't see the resemblance when he pulls out the picture. And it's like, it's exactly Eustace just with a big white beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they all look I guess they all look the same. Which is like the ma looks like Eustace. So then Ma and the dad also <laughs> look alike. They all just look the same, you know? Yeah. That's, that's hilarious. <laughs> um but yeah, so um, so Ikit, what was the name of the? Yes, I'm mean, almost like obviously it's a whale, so I almost want to assume that there's like a Moby Dick reference, but like I don't think what was the name of the? Do you remember the name of the fisherman in Moby Dick? Uh oh no, I actually don't. No, I don't. I was trying to remember if there was a um, yeah, I mean I'm not seeing it on the wiki. Um. Doesn't mean that it's not a reference to. Yeah. Um, I mean, let me look it up because I was like, movie dick character. <laughs> oh, Ahab. Um, Captain Ahab. Okay, so not Ikit. <laughs> 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 nothing, nothing close to Ikit. But I was just curious. I couldn't yeah, remember. Just curious. We're just curious. <laughs> Ikit sounded like it could be a Moby Dick name. <laughs> Yeah, because it's like just so interesting, so weird and stuff. But yeah, like yeah, I thought it was yeah. cute too. How when um he's trying to get a uh, the accordion when he has the accordion, and he finally has Ma, and they're going through the chase sequence in the third act. He's playing, I think, the Courage theme song. I mm. think is what he's playing with the accordion, <laughs> and like one yeah. of the chase theme songs. It's like nee, 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 but he's doing it with the accordion. <laughs> Oh, uh, the accordion is quite, you know, not not as annoying as bagpipes, but the accordion, not a fan. You're not <laughs> a fan. Bagpipes are worse, but accordion, not that great. Not that great. <laughs> to me, it's like bagpipes are like the worst. And then like accordions in there, and then like the recorder. It's pretty, the recorder. It's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but this is, yeah, this is a fun one. Um, but, um, so episode was dedicated to Jim Dilworth, um, which I guess is our creator, right? Jim Dilworth is it the creator? Or Dilworth. Was a... I don't know because I think it's J- I don't know if the J stands for it because I think it's J D Dilworth or JD. something like that oh, or J P. Okay. So I don't know if that's Dilworth. him or if that's like his father or if it's him. Oh, okay, because so J J P Dilworth passed away. Okay. Um, so a lot of people had passed away, sort of, I guess, that were involved around the time of the real cheery trivia. Um, but yeah, so I guess, um, yeah, they dedicated it to, um, to him. Um, it was sort of, it was seen after the sand whale flying to the camera between the episodes, the end and dedicated to Jay. So yeah, so they sort of put it in there. It's a dedication. Okay. Um, I don't know if it was the creator. He was an animator. <coughs> oh, John R. Delworth, older John, brother yeah, John. of creator John R. Delworth. Oh, okay. Um, so he does. De- so he designed. Oh, okay. So he specifically designed King Ramses. Nice. Um. So what a legacy to have, right? Because that's one of the most iconic characters from the show. Yeah. Um. 
and then oh and he sang oh my and he lent he lent his voice so to sing happy birthday on the radio in the house of discontent which we just oh. saw oh wow uh, that's cool that was his voice that was his voice on the radio that eustace was listening to okay yeah yeah wow okay so nice that was yeah, fun trivia that that's really really nice trivia right there yeah so yeah beautiful then you know sort of and then have the dedication and then sort of you know to have a legacy like that you create like a very iconic animated character that definitely everyone who grew up watching the show we all we we all know return the slab so <laughs> oh yeah yeah so yeah it's, it's really nice that they pay homage and like i said respect there's a lot of respect that goes along with courage and like i said great great to hear that yeah yeah but um but overall i mean so overall another another good episode um before we head into now uh, like a two-parter um or yeah. You know, yeah so yeah because this is our you know so i guess it was since the first season we do four episodes for the finale because there's yeah. an odd number <laughs> <laughs> um but boy is this a doozy this one um this i don't remember this one growing up but this is one of my favorite episodes ever Oh yeah, this was really really awesome. <laughs> so this is the Tower of Doctor Zalist. Um, so an extremely depressed and misunderstood professor named Doctor Zalist is incapable of dealing with his sorrowful condition by himself. Overcome by his jealousy of other people's happiness, he lashes out at nowhere, firing unhappy cannonballs out of his walking tower, and plummets the entire town into a state of depression. Um, to gain happiness, he seeks economic elements from the representatives of nowhere. But when he does not experience relief, he refuses to undo what he has inflicted. There's a longer synopsis, but I'm not going to go into no, we want um, We want to still talk about some stuff. So so. This, <laughs> yeah, this episode from like the beat, first second, it was just with the with the music. And then like, yeah. like well, this is my favorite score. I don't know what the heck they were smoking. <laughs> They loved it. Yeah, it was so them. cool. This episode, and then let me talk about yeah, like animation. So the, the animation for the, the Walking Castle was very cool. And I don't know if this was, I don't know if this came out before. I think this came out before Howl's Moving Castle. Um, this is one of my favorite Miyazaki films. But like, it kind of reminded me of that. They had this like mecha yeah. castle that was like walking through, and the way it was animated kind of reminded me of Howl. Um, but like yeah the music and the firing of the cannons into the town of nowhere which is much more de densely populated so this is so we actually get a look at like the town so i guess so our family right um courage and, and company all live sort of on the outskirts of nowhere and then yeah. so the town of nowhere is a legitimate town yeah like we see like, actual actual residents in this episode and I, yeah, so I love how it took like two seasons for us to actually see like a populated town of nowhere <laughs> <laughs> um but man and like the concept right of like he can't be happy so he has to make everyone else unhappy is such a deep deep story to tell yeah here and right? i think his character like even his his character in general it's very simple like you said but he has the mannerisms the delivery of the lines and like you said the concept of the character all build into the theme of this episode yeah and like well, you know and, you know we've always talked about me being a therapist and I, so i love this message in particular of like because people deal with depression in so many different ways right um you know some people sort of you know they isolate and they kind of you know shut out and then some people yeah. you know um a, a, another part of depression can be anger and lashing out at the world yeah. and like if i feel this other people need to feel this and so he took it and sort of weaponized his depression um and and how like sort of uh, all-consuming depression can can feel right yeah. like he's gonna just and then it sort of spreads almost like uh, you know yeah. he's, at, he's at war with the world here <laughs> <laughs> um you know and and, and interesting like, and, and, and i don't know quite what they're saying here with like him looking for funding and then getting denied by like the greedy town we're like yeah, we raised their taxes and blah 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 blah. <laughs> so they're unhappy anyway. Yeah, he's all he wanted what 30, 33 and a third billion dollars. <laughs> I mean, it's no small chunk of change, but Hell no, no. um I'm I mean I'm wondering if it's almost like um you know how hard it is for some people to get help, right? Where it can feel yeah. like this like unsurmountable kind of um 
amount, right? You know, it can feel like a lot. And then, you know, if you don't get the help that you need, it can just yeah. sort of spiral from there, right? I mean, yeah. granted, he's like, yeah, give me all this money. I'm like, okay, well, you know, it's quite <laughs> literally, you know, he's like, of course, you're not going to get this money to make everyone happy. <laughs> but, um, you know, yeah, so he doesn't get the help that he needs, so he lashes out. Yeah. And then we end up finding out we cut to Courage and with Courage and Muriel. And they're in the kitchen and she's cooking her secret recipe for the happiest plums. Is that correct? Right? It's the happy plums. happy plums. Yeah. Yeah. And Courage des- decides to eat all three cups when he's trying to measure out and equal the cups out and balance them, which that gag just was so simple, but made me laugh so much. Just that simple gag of him measuring out the cups. And, he, and then he was like, well, I'm going to eat this one. And then he ate the other and then he ate it all yeah. of it. <laughs> oh my god, so funny! But like, yeah, no, my that's 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 great. My favorite gag is when he starts firing the balls, like the cannonballs at the at the farmhouse, and it doesn't work on Eustace. And I'm like immediately, yeah. I knew why. I'm like, was well, he's miserable? <laughs> <laughs> he's already miserable. You know, that's like his only amazing power is that he's he's immune to certain villains in this show because of what they what they want from people. Yeah, I was like, you know, <laughs> I just made me think of my, um, like my grandfather. He's no longer with us, but he will. He was somewhat of a miserable man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, he, uh, he, he exuded like, that cranky yeah, attitude kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh man, yeah. And so when I'm like, oh, well, he's miserable, and it just made me like in my head, I almost like flashback to being like, well, my grandfather, he's miserable. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it just made me kind of play out. You know, I just like, I don't know, if it was like PTSD or something. I just played out as like that joke <laughs> happened, but I was like. That's too perfect. Nice. But it was cool because, yeah, this episode does play out. It's marked as two episodes, like a part one, part two, but it plays out as just one, like kind of yeah, like a no one break. long movie episode kind of thing. Yeah, there's no continuing. Yeah, I mean, I wonder, like, because in streaming, it just they didn't need to. And like, yeah. so, or, or like if it was like on the DVD, they don't need to. But like if this was to air on TV and there's like a commercial break, maybe they do come in with a part two sign like a little yeah. credit i don't know a little tile card but um yeah you don't really need to, you know there's really no clear like act break yeah you know? and um, this one like said for both of us i like you said i don't remember ever watching this one at a younger age if i did i totally forgot it but i don't think i would have forgot this episode no it's so good and it's so smart and it's like such a good finale um you know if this was almost like a series finale too even that's which is very funny they do finales really well um yeah. now i'm remembering the season one finale um i think it was like the puppeteering one I and like it was so. like them sort of playing out their dynamics in like yeah. almost like a grotesque kind of puppeteer kind of way yeah and, sort of was, and, he, and then he ends up turning himself into a marionette or something like that yeah yeah and like it would have been a very dark ending for the show if that was the series finale but they do these really interesting, like big swings um, of like, you know, they have like the, the like sort of the emotionally heavier episodes or the ones that sort of tackle the bigger things yeah. tend to be their finales. Um, so far between season one, and season two, you know, uh, we'll see if it changes with three and four, but um, yeah, this show, they, they really always knock it home with the final episode. Oh yeah, this was a fantastic one. Like I said, so far, probably season two, very strong season improvements in a lot of areas. And I think mm-hmm. as far in terms of the block for this season that we've been talking about, this might have been my favorite grouping of episodes. I think I said that last time, but this was this was a really good grouping of episodes though, for real. This was, I feel like, the most um balanced, I think, uh, in terms of a grouping of episodes. Like as far as like delivering on the promise of it sort of being a horror parody or or a horror satire, yeah. um, this tends to land home a little bit more, right? I mean, it's still a comedy, like it's still funny, but they're you know, I think when they tend to lean more comedy and slapsticky, it doesn't always like land as much. Yeah. Um, but like when you do like a nice healthy mix of like horror and classic sci-fi. Um, you get this sort of feeling a little bit more than like, say, like, yeah, like the the, the duck god, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, something you know, very... like, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, more Looney Tunes each time. And it doesn't feel like it quite lands on the thesis of the show, which is like, it's going to be kind of creepy, but fun. Yeah. Um, 
It reminds I know that I said that. Did you, did you ever see She Hulk? The she the show I only yeah. watched I think the first two episodes I think I only watched the first three episodes or um, something like that. <laughs> there's a oh, there's a character named Madison she's so funny and she was talking about how she went to a magic show and she got sent to like a portal of hell and she's like they were like describe your journey and she's like first it was scary and then it was spooky um, but in a fun way and then <laughs> scary and then spooky again or something like, you know, the way she, it's like it's like a really funny monologue it, it cracks me up every time um but it reminds me of this show nice. where the way i said it, it's like it's spooky but it's fun you know it's a... oh yeah this is um, a fun journey to take for sure like i said great introduction horror because it's yeah. like got good nostalgia vibes it's funny we got good music but it's also like i said creepy and has that horror nature to it as well yeah oh absolutely um but yeah any other thoughts on our finale no, oh shout sure. out to the rat though <laughs> i didn't talk about the rat <laughs> um i did love the bed where he was like could you just hug me and the rat wasn't yeah. trying he's like you call that a hug <laughs> 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 he's like, he just needs love yeah he just um, wants he just wants to love yeah but hey anyway, i think it's like you know yeah just again the music. Oh, I need to like just listen to the song, like the soundtrack from this episode. I was like so impressed. Oh yeah, um, I would totally buy. Like a, I just recently, actually, my wife scored me a Cowboy Bebop soundtrack on vinyl. I, oh, I, yeah. I was just that you brought that up. The score from this one, I was like, wow, like a Courage the Cowardly Dog soundtrack vinyl would be amazing from the season. Well, it's funny you mentioned the Cowboy Bebop. I'm actually going with my friend. We're gonna see Cowboy Bebop in concert. Nice. And yeah, we're gonna yeah. get all that jazz and all that stuff music. All that stuff's gonna, you know, they're gonna play that live. I'm, I'm stoked. <laughs> um, oh, I didn't do any fun facts. I don't think for this one yet. Um, so I, I guess this is true. Zalos, Zalos is. I guess it's supposed to be a reference or a joke off of Zoloft. You guys take <laughs> depression medication. So, okay. Um, uh, but he, well, that's because his name translates to sorrow in Croatian. Wow. Interesting. Um, <laughs> I guess Zoloft. Yeah, so I guess maybe that's funny enough. I don't know if Zoloft is actually yeah, a, a reference off of the Croatian word for sorrow. I always wonder where they get the yeah. names from. Yeah, because um, you got to think some, some people must think hard about them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Dilworth uh, is Croatian. Um, nice. Do, 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 do. Or no, not Croatia. He went to Croatia. He's not Croatian. He went to Croatia. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I bet that one wrong. <laughs> um, and then let's see. Do, 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 do. The logo used. Um, I didn't catch this actually. Uh, is a reference to the the font for Legend of Zelda. That's cool. Yeah, I'll have to watch that. Yeah, I'll I have to go back and look at the, the title card because I don't. That, that, that didn't jump out at me right away. Uh, but yeah, so fun little fact. Definitely. It's been a lot of fun tackling this season two. I'm excited, man. Season three is going to be great because I bet you oh, there's yeah. some cool new villains, some mm -hmm. probably, like I said, reoccurring people we're going to see and stuff. So it's going to be a fun time. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. It's, it was really cool going and seeing the evolution of the show. And now we're like, yeah, okay. Now by season three, you know, a show typically really finds its footing, which is funny when you say that because I think like, you know, Courage is pretty. Yeah, they've had some pretty stellar episodes in these first two Definitely. seasons. So I don't know if they really, you can really safely say they need to find their footing. I think two, they certainly find a good balance. Yeah, we we'll see if they can keep it going. You know, that's what basically we're gonna we're gonna see if they can keep this tone going and this flow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. So anything, Steve? Before we go, is there anything on voices you want to plug or any kind of special stuff happening? You know, you're asking me anything live that's coming up pretty soon, right? Right. Anything. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me because I was like, what do we have coming up? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. We do have an Ask Me Anything live. Uh, that is going to be. Hold on. Let me pull that up real fast. <laughs> um. That is going to be August twenty seventh at nice. nine o'clock. It's a Tuesday. Um, that'll be our live stream there. That'll be super fun. Um, and we're really close to our a thousand subscribers. I think we, as of us recording this, um, we are at 988. So nice. we got 12 to go. Um, Keep going, people. Go sub. Yeah, go so sub now. <laughs> 
Yeah, so spread the word. Um, you know, that's gonna be a big, big milestone. You know, I came on uh about two thirds. I mean, I, I forgot how many years Angel had been doing it before I had come on the scene, but I'm gonna hit my one year anniversary in September with voices. Nice. Sweet. Um so yeah, but yeah, Angel put in so much work, and then this last year. Um, I'm not gonna say it's because of me, but you know, we've been uh <laughs> we've chugging along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, it's been fun. I mean, yeah, so our our horror live streams, um, our franchise live streams, I should say, uh, those are over uh for the summer, but we have the Ask Me Anything. Um uh Rob and I are doing spawn for our next heroes episode, so keep Sweet. an eye out for that. That's gonna be a fun one. Um, we have more coffee crypt, more fun things. I have some some things brewing actually that I'm very excited for. Um, <laughs> maybe some D and D related stuff. Sweet. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. Just keep an eye out. You know, there's always something happening. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, we'll have the, I'll have that link in the description. So, like I said, go get them to a thousand subs. Keep on them because you want to be there for that live stream. So you could ask him and Angel anything you want and stay there. Because like I said, they got a ton of content coming out and they're always pushing the boundaries, making new creative ideas and new creative shows. So always showing voices some love. And thank you for sticking around with us all. Like I said, we are streaming this on HBO Max. That's where we watch these episodes and stuff like that. And now that we are through season two, like I said, on to season three. Hope you're all excited. Make sure you sub to the channel, like subscribe, all that stuff, share, you know, all the jam, but also have a safe and happy day. Peace out, y'all. See ya.